Uh, my name is Sheldon Smith. I'm the educational director for the CCGTCC, and we're on seminar number three. Okay, and this is really exciting because we're outside of the United States, and we know about riverboats, and we know about Nevada, and we know about California, and we know about New Jersey. We don't know a lot about the Caribbean, and this is the Caribbean and Cuba. And as we all know, there aren't any casinos in Cuba anymore, but there are chips from those casinos. And we are really fortunate to have what I would consider the two experts on the Caribbean. Now, I won't say that Charles Kaplan is more than an expert, Ralph Pollock, or Ralph Pollock is more than an expert than Charles is, but they're going to do... He completely is the first to Ralph. So there's, there's a story right there. And Ralph is blushing, so the program's over. Um, Ralph is going to go first because we have a PowerPoint presentation, and I think it's going to be really wonderful. On your program, if anybody wants to take a look, it's page 25. It gives you a little bit of the history of, of Ralph and Charles. I will say that if you haven't gotten on to Charles Kaplan's website on the Caribbean casino chips, you are missing an incredible treat. When you open up the website, there's a map of the entire Caribbean, and when you run your cursor over a city or an island or a country, if it lights up, you can click a button and suddenly all the casinos that were in or are in that neck of the woods pop up on the screen. I go to it. I don't do a lot of collecting in the Caribbean, but the, the website is worth looking at. And Ralph is going to start first with his PowerPoint presentation. We are going to attempt to hold questions to the end so that the guys can get through their presentations. Without further ado, Ralph Pollock. Thank you much, very much, Shelley, and also thank you, uh, the club, for having me here. Appreciate it a lot. The reason that I'm here is partly because of Jim Blanchard and his uh, Burt Company records. Without the records, we have no history of any chip or any casino. But with records, we can find the dates of the manufacturer of the chips and get an approximate date of the casino uh, operations. One of my favorite slides is this. It tells a lot. It's the West Indies, South America, CJJK, Clifford Jones, and Jay Kozlovs. The artwork is what I'm concentrating on today. This is all artwork that's made by hand in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And each artwork is about six inches in diameter. Then it's reduced to about seven eighths of an inch. So this is handmade. So if you take a handmade uh, uh, picture and reduce it, you'll never get the clarity that the handmade is. So what we're going to see is what the handmade looks like and also compare it with the chips and the inlays. Uh, the CJJK, as you can see, was done in 1963, these set of nice chips inlays. And these are just varieties of the different chips with different molds. The top chips have the uh, H.C. Edwards mold and the bottom chips have the uh, Slim Ewing mold. For different casinos, both in the West Indies and also South America. And in South America, these were used in Suriname at the Tararica Casino and at the uh, Suriname Casino or the Palace Casino. The Aruba Sheraton, very, very rare kind of chip, but yet the artwork is just nice and clear as compared to the artwork on the chip itself, on the inlay itself. A very pretty chip and artwork is the Memora Beach. And you can just see the clarity of the artwork versus the clarity on the chip itself. No matter how you scan these chips, you're not going to get the clarity that this artwork is. And the appreciation of humans making this is just wonderful. However, here we also have a date of this New Bahamian Club. It's 1966. So on the records of the artwork, there are no dates usually, but when you combine two and two, you may come up with the number four. So you can find out from the dates when they were made and the dates when the artwork was approximately made. Another gorgeous piece of artwork is from Lucayan Beach at the Bahamas. That shield, when you look at it, is just beautifully made. It's nice on the chip also, but the artwork is even a little bit nicer. Paradise Island, common chip, but the artwork has different layers. 
So when the artwork is done, the basic Paradise Island words, Nassau, Baham, stays the same. The island stays the same. They have overviews, clear overviews to use, and they keep the basic background the same and use different denominations on the clear overview. El Casinos, another nice artwork from the Freeport Bahamas. This is not artwork, but it's from the Riviera. It's a token about uh, an inch and a half in diameter. It's bronze, um, but it does have the basic wordings that they have also on the chips themselves. I don't think a nicer piece of artwork was done than this Sans Souci. The detail on the chip is one thing, but on that artwork is just magnificent. There are things that you can see large on the screen that you'll never ever see with the chip. I think I would probably give this prize number one as far as artwork is concerned. And we have a date, 1954, 1957. So now, going back here, we can date this via the records from the Burt Company. Before that, it was anybody's guess. And fortunately, the Burt Company had the quantities of each of the chips of each valuation on there. So we have a lot of information, a lot of history that we would never have had before. Capri Casino. This is a multitude of overlays, and if you look carefully, things don't line up because that's the way it was scanned. It wasn't lined up exactly the same way, but on the real um, artwork, it was perfectly aligned, and it would coincide with the chip itself. We also have a date, 1959. Exact date, May 18, 1959. 500 whites, 1,000. Greens, 1,500 oranges, no bananas. Another piece of nice artwork is George Raff's Casino de Capri. We have the dates, 1957 and 1958, when George had his lovely picture on it. And there's, if you look carefully, there's an airplane in the middle of the Casino Capri on the inlay side. How many of those were 1,000. Do I hear 2,000? <laughs> Going once. That's what they try to get Going twice. Yes. It's a very pretty chip. Wilbur Clark's. Well, also a very nice art design. And Wilbur's got his face in it. I, I couldn't find Wilbur's face. But other than that, everything else is exactly the same. Curacao Antillian. There's a whole slew of Antillian chips. Uh, the one is the one, you can see the one, then you'll overlay the five, overlay the 25, overlay the 100, et cetera, et cetera. And they also had different um, inserts in them, but the basic artwork is this way. The Curacao Hilton, not a common chip. Not a common chip at all. There was a series of uh, eight of them. Um, and the ones and fives, I have not seen a thousand. John, have you seen a thousand? No. I've seen the ones, fives, 25s, et cetera. Uh, the interesting thing about the, this Casino Hilton, Curacao Hilton, was the, the logo. Why was the logo that way? Well, take a look. An aerial view of the swimming pool shows the eight-sided logo. Now, they didn't make the swimming pool before the logo. The, lo the logo was there, and they used that logo to design the swimming pool. Eight-sided pool. Kind of crazy, but... That's where it came from. Sands of Curacao, not a very big casino, but we know that it was in 1972 because we have the records of 1972. And again, the overlay is 100, and you have the overlay of 25, 5, and 1. And these are the series on the Burt Company records of the actual order times, 1972. You know, the numbers that they had at that time in the Antillian Casino was not really a big casino, it wasn't a small casino, but at that date in 72, they had 4,000 white chips, $1 chips, 4,000, for those in the back who can't read it, 4,000 uh, red fives, 4,000 red fives with blue inserts, 
3,000, 25, 3,000, 25, 1,000 black and 1,000 black with different inserts. So for this one order, we have 16, 18,000 chips. Where are they all? I don't know. Intercontinental. Interesting casino. The artwork again here is very nice, and in, in the artwork there's a red center inlay also. There's actually, that's the exact center inlay, but this chip with the Ewing mold has a 25 green in it. Curacao had the sedilla between the uh, NWIs, Netherlands, West Indies. Then, 1964, they did the same chip in the HCE mold with the same center inlay as you saw in it before. This is red, this is green, same artwork, different orderings, maybe different owners of the casino at the time. Um, maybe they were credit chips. I personally don't know what exactly, why they used the two different molds in the same casino. But the artwork is similar and it's still gorgeous blown up. The amount, Gene, of how many were done on the ones, there were 2,000 ones, 2,000 fives, 1,000 25s for 5,000 chips in 1964. And Silcox is the person who does the actual center inlay, the material. Silcox is one, and there are several other manufacturers. So they take the inlays and then and press it into the chip. This is not a bad looking artwork. The chip is a very regal looking chip. The artwork is a little different, but also nice. And also these are kind of scarce. They're not all over the place. And we have the records so we know exactly what was ordered, when it was ordered. Um, the $1 lavender in red, 2,000, 2,000 black, five, 1,025. The casino was a small casino in Haiti. And if they had second or third or tertiary orders, I don't know about them, but we know this in 1959. Martinique, still in the picture too. Very simple, very plain, not a very elaborate artwork, but we have the artwork to correspond to the chip. Let's go to Puerto Rico. A lot of Puerto Rico chips around. Not that much artwork around. Here we had a artwork that's as close as I could find to a red artwork that we have here. And the 100 denomination, I couldn't find a 100 denomination to uh, correlate with the two. This is a logo that we all should be familiar with. The logo was in Puerto Rico, Suriname, and Aruba. The executive house hotels chain had the casinos under their guise. Whether the government had part of the monies, I don't know, but this starfish logo was in three locations, to my knowledge only, Puerto Rico, Aruba, and Suriname. And in small print, I'll read it for you, for those of you who can't see in the back. It says, Executive House, Washington, D.C., Scottsdale, Arizona, Aruba Caribbean Hotel Casino, Suriname Tororoca Casino, Condado Beach Hotel, and then the San Juan International Airport Hotel. I don't think they had a casino there, but this executive house ran three hotels with the three casinos in there, and all had the Starfish logo. Starfish logo on the Aruba Caribbean. We have the dates of this, the amounts, 1974. Then we have the logo of, in the middle of Puerto Rico. And then on the token itself shows the starfish logo of the Suriname Tararica. So the three put together uh, coordinate with the advertisement of the brochure. A variation that you may or may not know in uh, the Puerto Rico collectors, there was a middle C inside the Condado Beach starfish. What that meant, I don't know. John, you have any idea? No. It could be me meant that it was a credit chip, I'm not sure, or another ownership, I don't know. But there are two variations. 
here's on the 25. These are pretty chips. The metal inlays don't have this artwork, so they don't have the beauty that we have in these chips. The Americana, I happen to own this um, artwork, but it's a very simple artwork. It was almost like a stamped out artwork, and the five was transposed later on with the 25 and the 100, etc. Um, but the artwork was not the same kind of quality that they had with the other ones that we showed previously. Now, Le Petit Hotel. Most of you know it. However, the chip has in one side the Miramar logo. You're all familiar with the Miramar Hotel in Puerto Rico? Well, that Miramar little logo is on the left of the $100, yet on the artwork, the original artwork, uh, it wasn't there. Uh, I don't know if anybody has, anybody here has this chip on the, that has the artwork in it and doesn't have the Miramar logo on it. I haven't seen it. And it's not in either one of the two Puerto Rico books. So let's all try to hunt for it and find it and let me know. Puerto Rico, the Hyatt Puerto Rico. Most of the chips have the blackout of the word Hyatt because probably there was a change in ownership and didn't want to use the, a new order of chips and they just blacked it out. But the original artwork had the Hyatt Puerto Rico on it. The blacking out was of the black word Hyatt. Now let's take a LBG. The chip does not have a location like many other chips do not have locations. In Las Vegas now all the chips have to have a location on it and most other places in Aruba have the actual location of the chip. Many chips of the Caribbean didn't have locations. Why? They didn't think of it. I spoke to the owner of the Excelsior Casino, the first set of chips in Aruba, just said Aruba. So I said to him, just said uh, Excelsior Casino. So I said to him, well, why don't you have the name of Aruba on there? It never dawned on him. Then the second series of chips had on the bottom of Aruba. But the first set of chips from Excelsior Casino in Aruba had no location on it. Never dawned on him to put a location on it. And they weren't 16,000 Excel, Excelsior casinos at the time either, nor now are. The Mayaguez Hilton, not a bad artwork, yet on the chip itself, it doesn't show the justice and the clarity that the artwork has. So for me, I like to see the artwork because of the clarity and the rarity. Very common Condado Holiday Inn with the H mold and the simple type of artwork that was here. Puerto Rico shirt, nice chip. Artwork when blown up shows more detail and I think all of us should be aware that the details are there yet when they, you shrink them down the clarity is lost. Flamboyant Hotel, the same thing. Very unusual chip. Has anybody ever seen the uh, no cash value chip from the Caribbean Hilton? Yet the artwork is here, yet the order card is here. So let's all hunt for it, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Very unusual chip, very unusual artwork. It's a non for those in the back who can't read it, non-negotiable table, no cash out value in 25 and $100 denominations. 1969. El Conquistador. I always liked that chip. I always liked the artwork of that chip. It just was a, a regal type of a chip that uh, showed its El Conquistador-like attitude. Pretty chip. San Geronimo Hilton. However, we have variations here. The common $100 one chip that you see is common. I have not seen the one in the artwork either. These may have been proofs. They may not have been made, but at least that was an original artwork that has not, to my knowledge, been transferred onto a chip. Again, Flamboyant Hotel, again, pretty artwork. The artwork on the design itself is gorgeous, the detail of all the yellow 
yet on the chip itself, it's not as clear. But the beauty is right here. These are the denominations that we have. Gorgeous artwork. Just beautiful. I happen to own this um, artwork, and this photograph doesn't even take, the scan doesn't make justice to the artwork. It's as bright yellow as you can get, and the clarity is just beautiful. Again, no location, Puerto Rico's not on there, etc., which was common at that time. Here, however, we have the Puerto Rican Sheraton, so that we know the location of this casino. And the art, artwork to myself on these chips is very regal. Simple, plain, but regal. Here we have a little mind twister here. The artwork says Sun and Sea Resorts Limited. Okay, I have no idea where that is. It may be a cruise ship or maybe some people here know where it is. However, the combination of the artwork on the Casino Royale, similar type of logo, and on the token from the Concord Casino on the lower left side is the same logo, a similar logo. So here we go. We're trying to put together some historical uh, evidence of where this comes from. I don't know, but it's a combination between the Concord and the Casino Royale. Well, there are two different spellings, one with the E, one with the e, without the E, that's correct. The whole set of those. But the artwork is similar to the Sun and Sea Resorts. Um, on the, I don't know if it's clear over there, but on the token itself, it, see, it says Seas and Suns Resort. So we have a link between these three chips, probably one owner, etc., of these casinos at one time. Again, a regal, simple artwork, but very nice. Uh, many of these came out in the horsehead right mold, uh, which was very common. The lesser common is the Nevada mold, and to me, a Nevada mold is a gorgeous mold. It was used correctly in the 1970s, and uh, if you have a nice Nevada mold chip that has a nice shininess to it, it's wonderful. It's like the Christian Jones shiny hat and cane. It's a gorgeous chip. And here they had actually, which I don't have, the second one, they have four different varieties. The 1525, which I know of, and the second 25 uh, that had a different color to it. I can't give the answer why. 1972. Nice chip. It's the, one of the few chips that I know of that has the map of an island on there. Curacao has Curacao. I'm not, we did that before, but this is the actual entire island in the background. There are two sets of Concord chips, one with the island and one without the island, at, done at seven, seven different types, times. One was 72, one 74. This was 1972. And the island was superimposed on there, and the numbers, numerals, and valuations are on the plastic that they keep on uh, going on and changing the denominations of these chips. Pretty artwork. 1972, the Burke Company records shows that the orders were made and uh, the island doesn't show very well on these black and whites, but the islands are on these, these chips. Maho Bay. To my knowledge, this is the only single chip from this casino. I've never seen another valuation at all. Why they only had $1 valuations, not sure of. It's the only one of its kind. If something else arises, let me know. The order of this was 1983, 4,000. That must mean that either the casino never used more than $1 chips, because 4,000 for a small casino was quite a bit. They just maybe used $1 chips. Mullet Bay. Chips are not very common. There are a few hundreds around here, but 25s are not common, 5s are not common, and 1s are medium. But nice artwork again. 
Another mullet bay. Again, no location listed, which is on many of the ships from the islands. And I'd like to thank Jim Blanchard. I'll take questions later on, and Charlie's going to take over from here. But I'd like to thank Jim Blanchard for his cooperation. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I've been pretty busy in my life, and one of the things I've been doing is the Caribbean website that's in front of you. Uh, but I also, uh, things happened in the, in the company that I worked, and, and the owner passed away, so I'm now running the company, and I didn't have a lot of time to put things together. So what I thought I'd do was something fun, and I'm calling it Puerto Rico Casino Jeopardy. So I put together 10 questions related to casinos in Puerto Rico. And a lot of the information I'll be able to either find or show you stuff to answer these questions that's already on the website. And uh, you can only win once. And what you'll win uh, is uh, a chip that I had made special for today's meeting. OK? So the first question is, what is a funicula? And what does it have to do with a Puerto Rico casino? Neil. That's the right answer. Um, if we go to the El Conquistador, excuse me. Funicula, F-I-N-I-C-U-L-A. Thank you. Okay. Here's a picture of the El Conquistador Hotel. And you could see that the main part of the hotel is up on a cliff, and the marina and the pool and the beach is down below. And over here, there's a little clearing. That's where the funicula is to take people it's, it's like a train, but it's on a cable to go up and down a steep area. And one of the things I put in my website is if you click on an image, um, you get to see the full size of it. So there's a picture of it. And I think I actually have some postcards from this hotel, if I go all the way down, where it's a little bit clearer. Here, you could see the... Uh, the tracks of the funicula. All right, so Neil, if you want to come up, I have a chip for you. Okay. Sure. That was Neil Silverman. Now, if you were paying attention earlier, you know the answer to this question. And the question is what is the connection between the Aruba Caribbean Casino and another casino in Puerto Rico? Go ahead. The star logo. The star, the executive house logo. And what I'll do first is um, I'm going to go back to. He's not allowed to win, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my chip up. <laughs> okay. If I go to the Aruba Caribbean, where's. Uh, here we are. Here's a couple of those chips with the star logo. And I might even have a matchbook over here. And the matchbook, matchbooks are great. They give you a lot of information. It tells you the same stuff that Ralph found, um, where it's executive house. And here are some of the hotels that they owned at the time, including the Condado Beach Hotel. And if I go then back to Puerto Rico, and pull up Condado Beach. And we have a lot of chips that were issued from the Condado Beach. Here is the Star logo again. So we had the executive house owning casinos in both Aruba and Puerto Rico. Okay. 
um, there was a Condado Holiday Inn, and after they used these these chips, and not a better way to show them is perhaps like this. Here are chips from the Condado Holiday Inn. Um, owners, the the hotel remained um, open, but you know what? I think I already accidentally gave you the answer to this. Um, the sands came in. So the question is, and I blew this, what does the CHI stand for in these sands series at Condado Holiday End? So it remained the Condado Holiday Inn, but the ownership of the casino changed, and it became the Sands Casino at the Condado Holiday Inn. So the whole group gets one then for answering that. All right, here's a tough one. The question is, who was Carl Willenda, and what was his connection to Puerto Rico casinos? All right, you win the chip if you could tell me one of the casinos. It's going to be the Concha. Not La Concha. Close by. Um, the story was Carl Willenda was the patriarch of the Flying Willenda family. And on March 22nd, 1978, they strung a cable between the Flamboyant Hotel and the Condado Plaza, and it happened to be a windy day with gusts up to 50 miles an hour, and on that day, Carl Willenda died with his boots on, falling off the trapeze to his death about 40 stories above the ground. Okay, here's an even tougher question, but you could get a chip also. What's your name? Okay, Albert. <laughs> I've spoken to Albert several times by email, but it's the first time I'm meeting him in person. Uh, and I, I did meet your father on several occasions. Th does everybody know who Al Rowland's father was? Okay. This. Okay, this is, this is a tougher one, but if, if you followed things, you might be able to know the answer. In 1972, when I was 18 years old, this was the first casino that I ever walked into. And the reason you would know it is, Neil Silverman, when he um, had his website, what was it called again, Neil? Checkers. Checkers had a contest about casino stories. And I submitted the story of my first visit to a casino and won second place. It was the Americana Casino. And uh, I'll just give you some background on that because it was a short version of it. Uh, it was the first casino I walked in. I had played poker with friends, but I had no idea how to play any table games whatsoever. Strolled over to the craps table, watched what other people were doing, kind of figured out the pass line bet, bet that a few times, figured out the, uh, the yo bet, and I finally bet $5 on 11 to come up, and 11 came up. Now, I'm 18 years old, I'm a, uh, a sophomore in college, and they're passing me three green chips, $75. $25 was my monthly food budget at school. So this was absolutely unbelievable to me. And while I'm coveting these three green chips, the dice are rolled again, and 11 comes up again, and they're passing me three more green chips. And I said, no, 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 I didn't bet on it. And that's when they explained to me, and I learned that your, bet st your yo bet stays on unless you bring it down. So that was $150 in the space of two minutes, and it was a whole semester's worth of food for me. <laughs> However, if, if I had walked away with those six green chips, 
Instead of cashing them in, I'd be a lot better off today. Okay. The name of this now closed casino originally was the Vanderbilt Hotel. What was the name of this casino when it was opened and it, uh, of this hotel when they had a casino there? So what's the prior name of, what casino had a prior name of the Vanderbilt Hotel? Any guesses? A hint. It was, it was in the Condado area and it's one of the few, you know, really old looking hotels. Most of the hotels were, were more modern built recently. Um, I'm going to say nobody's going to win this one. It was the Condado Beach and if I again go down to the postcard section here uh, and show you side by side these two postcards whoops, wrong way. Here is a picture of the Condado Beach, and if I blow it up, it says the Condado Hotel. And if I go a little bit lower, here is the picture of the Vanderbilt Hotel. And you can, well, it doesn't, I guess it says on the front side that it was the Vanderbilt, but it's exactly the same hotel. And these are the fun things that you learn when you start looking at other th collectibles from casinos other than the chips. On New Year's Eve, 1986, there was a tragic fire at the DuPont Plaza. And it took almost 100 lives, I think 97 lives. For the chip, what was the cause of the fire? Who, who, who's, who answered that? Archie? Arson by, by who? Employees. employees. Yeah, there was a employee dispute going on, and some of the uh, hotel employees started a fire, and uh, they didn't think they thought it was going to be more like a prank than a, a serious thing, but it got out of hand, and led to that disaster. So, New Year's, New Year's Eve, 1986. So Archie gets a chip. Okay. Next question. On the table games of this now open casino in Puerto Rico, they have signs that say the casino chips are property of the casino and cannot be removed from the premises. I guess I'm asking pretty tough questions. <laughs> All of them? Well, I've been to probably most of them, and this is the only place I've ever seen a sign like that. And it's, I don't have a picture of the sign, unfortunately, but it's from the, the Diamond Palace. And that's a pretty nice picture of the opening there. And this, this is a locals hotel. It's one block off the beach, and you'll find mostly locals there and not tourists. Okay. Perhaps this is a little bit easier. This now closed casino, the hotel is still open, but at times in its history, this hotel had been uh, a brothel and a convent. Oh, wow. I said it's an easier one, so it's in old. It's in the old San Juan area. Think, think of the, the two places that I said it was going to be. A brothel and a convent. El Cavento. Who had that answer? No. Yeah, the casino is long gone. I, I was there recently, too, and asked if they might have some old stuff around, and they said no. <laughs> okay. This is probably going to be another tough one. This casino 
in Puerto Rico is the only one that I know of that ever issued a dovetail chip. And the, Ralph is actually absolutely correct. And here are the pictures of the Dorado Del Mar. They have a $100 chip. It's a Christie Jones. And it's available in both with the red dovetail and the green dovetail. And I found mine, which is the, the green dovetail one, at this... Uh, convention two years ago. Wow. Pretty Very pretty chip. So, um, while we still have some time, um, I wanted to show you some of the, the things that I did with this website. The website is, is not a commercial website. It's meant to be an online catalog. And I'm, I solicit, if, if you have images of chips that are not here, please send them to me. I'll, uh, scan, I'll get the uh, scans cropped and rotated and um, onto the website. Every chip has a contributed by field here. And um, the, the website automatically builds a table of who's contributed. And if you go to the website info button and click on contributors, you'll see a table. Of all the people who have contributed, here's Albert Scalzo, and all the different types of things he's contributed in a number, and you could go all the way down. There's, and a lot of people in this room are mentioned here. There's Archie. Uh, I don't think Mr. Splash Bar is here. Um, I saw Carmen earlier today, Chuck Maids, David Sprague. Uh, Don Luters, and so forth. Uh, I do keep track of stuff that I find when I search on the internet and just attribute them to the internet. So if I see something on eBay and it's not anybody I know, I'll just give it that designation. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see how many chips there are and how many roulette chips and all the different types of collectibles that are there. And we're up to 3,950 different items. I have a backlog of probably another two or 300 items that people have sent me that are sitting in my to-do box waiting to be cropped and put onto the website. And I know there are a few collectors who have quite a bit more material. And um, as they get time, they're sending me stuff. Uh, so it's much appreciated. Uh, some other things I did. Let's go to a casino. Um, by the way, thanks to Greg Susong, uh, I thought he did the best job at developing an online website for, as a catalog for chips. And I asked him if I could copy the style of it. And he said he agreed. And he didn't give me any programming or anything, but he said I could use the same style that he did. And uh, I figured out how to copy it. And then I decided to do some things uh, that he didn't do. And that's, for instance, I have a flag and a map uh, of every island and every country uh, on the website. Another thing that I did was, let's say you want to know all the casinos that were in Old San Juan. You could go through the list and try and find them. Or if you go to where it says city, you'll see that it changes color. It means if you click it, something's going to happen. So if you click on city, it will sort the list of casinos by city and then by casino. So then you could go down over here and see, oh, here are the, the four different casinos that had been in old San Juan. And if you go back and click on casino, then it'll go back to the other, uh, the way it was originally sorted. Um, some other sorts that you can do. Um, here is the Kruby Hilton, and you can see they had a variety of different molds and shapes. Uh, one of the things I did was because uh, with Greg's site, it's mostly uh, river boats and Indian casinos that have only been around 10 to 20 years at the most. There aren't a whole lot of chips from each casino, but some of these Puerto Rico casinos 
and other casinos from the Caribbean have been around for 50 years, and they have hundreds of chips issued, and you could go blind going through the entire list. So I put in something called Quick View that kind of generates a page much like Archie's catalogs look like with the casinos and uh, with the chips in this format. And since I did that, I said another nice idea might be, let's say you just want to look at chips from one series. Like you want to see all the Bud Jones chips. So I assign series numbers to the molds. And if you click on the series button, it will just show you the Bud Jones chips or whatever series you wanted. If you want to see all the chip goes, you click on that and you can see all the chip goes next to each other. I think that's a nice way to display them. Some, some other fields, you know, these fields that are in blue, they're all clickable. If you uh, click on the mold field, it will sort them by mold and then by denomination. So here are all the Bud Jones chips first. And after Bud Jones, alphabetically would be chip goes, and you see them in order and so forth. And you could sort by denomination or by the catalog number and so on. So different ways of seeing um, the information on the website. Uh, roulettes posed a problem because on a roulette table, you in, in a casino, you could have 20 or more roulette tables and you can have six or seven or eight perhaps different colors or some indication, you know, for the different players at the tables. So that would make the list extremely long. So what I did for uh, roulettes, and I know the I have a pretty complete set of chips from the Crystal Palace here. I select one chip to represent the entire series, like this this uh, sky blue uh, chip from the, the fourth uh, roulette table. And if you click on the series, all the other chips that I have that have been sent to the database pop up. So that makes the list a little bit more manageable. Um. I think I've covered most of the features. Uh, some people said it might be interesting to know how I made the website. If you have questions about that or anything else about um, Puerto Rico casinos, we, I guess Ralph and I can entertain questions now. Yes, sir. Where does the website run? Are you using Greg's servers or are you on your own server? I'm on my own server. And I like that question because um, I had a website that I ran before, and it ran on oneinone.com, which is a commercial website, you know, hosting company, uh, and they're pretty inexpensive. I pay six dollars a month for them to host the website, and I use only a fraction of the 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 disk space they make available and the traffic and all that other stuff. So I will never exceed a cost of $6 a month. And the amazing thing to me is how inexpensive it was to put the website together. Um, I had to get a, a web application server, um, which is uh, Apache. I had to get a programming language, which is PHP. I had to get a database, which is MySQL. All that was free, and download, I downloaded all from the internet. So my total cost in developing this website was zero, and it cost me $6 a month. And that includes the domain registration. And I got, by the way, three domain registrations for, six, for the $6 a month service. Oneonone.com. It's the number one, A-N-D, one, dot com.
And so far, I've been very happy with them. Any other questions? Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming, and I want to give a round of applause for that.